Norway provides aid to Palestinian refugees. In February 2022, Norwegian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Her Excellency Anniken Huitfeldt, affirmed Norway's donation of around 124.5 million US dollars to support the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, UNRWA, for four years. Almost 80 million US dollars will go towards health care, education, social services, and relief aid for Palestinian refugees, while approximately 45 million US dollars will provide emergency support with a focus on child protection and addressing gender-based abuse. UNRWA Commissioner General His Excellency Philip Lazzarini expressed appreciation for Norway's commitment and underscored the urgency for adequate funding to secure the rights and essential needs of vulnerable Palestinians as well as promote stability in the Middle East. Norway is a recipient of Shining World Leadership Awards for Environmental Protection, Humanitarianism, Good Governance and Peace and the Laureate of Shining World Leadership Awards for Animal Protection and Compassion. Our gratitude Norway and UNRWA RWA for your steadfast commitment to our brothers and sisters in their time of need. May the noble Palestinian people soon greet brighter days ahead in Allah's grace. Damaging subsidies fueling world's extinction. A new study assesses that countries globally are dedicating at least 1.8 trillion US dollars annually to subsidies that are accelerating the collapse of ecosystems and species extinction. Altogether, 640 billion US dollars are given to the fossil fuel industry, 520 billion US dollars to the agricultural sector, 350 billion US dollars to water projects, and 155 billion US dollars to forestry, which includes tax breaks for beef production across the Amazon. Meanwhile, 50 billion US dollars of public money are used to provide incentives to the marine capture fisheries sector which drives overfishing, put together by the B team, a global collective of business and civil society leaders and international coalition Business for Nature. The paper calls for a reform of the damaging subsidies while shifting towards an equitable, environmentally supportive and net zero world by 2030. Many thanks the B team, Business for Nature, and all involved. In God's wisdom, may all governments redirect resources to eco-friendly and planet-sustaining initiatives. Cyprus bans plastic carrier bags. The Cypriot Parliament recently enacted new regulations prohibiting the sale of plastic carrier bags at shops and kiosks beginning February 2023 to help protect the island nation's environment and citizens' health. The rules also ban their distribution, supply, production and use. Oxo-degradable plastic bags are outlawed immediately as they are not fully biodegradable or compostable and have been found to leave plastics in the environment once the bioadditives holding the material together have diminished. Way to go, Cyprus, on your sensible regulations to encourage people to bring their own shopping bags and thus limit the amount of waste entering the environment. May we quickly convert all aspects of the global economy to be green and more in tune with the natural world. In heaven's blessings. Saris made of water hyacinth to improve livelihood of rural women in India. A non-profit entity promoting clean water, Swasheta Pukare, has joined with non-governmental organization Naturecraft to support rural women to create Indian saris with thread from water hyacinth. It has hired about 200 women to gather the plants from 30 to 40 ponds in West Bengal. The fine thread extracted from dried plants will be used for manufacturing high-quality saris with the goal to start selling them in June or July. Once production begins, it is hoped the participants should be able to earn a monthly income. The initiative is also helpful for restoring the pond ecosystem as the water hyacinths tend to dominate through their rapid growth. Kudos Swasheta Pukare and Naturecraft for helping economically support underprivileged women while also benefiting the environment. In divine goodwill, may your forward-thinking efforts succeed as the world creates many more win-win endeavors like yours. Canadian University students provide essentials to homeless youths. Selena Lovisato of Queen's University and Brooke Baker of Royal Military College of Canada, both in Kingston, Ontario, co-founded the non-profit Bags of Promise in the spring of 2021 to support unhoused youths in the community. 
In February, the group brought 30 backpacks containing basic necessities donated by local residents and businesses to the Kingston Youth Shelter and planned to offer more in spring. Ms. Lovisato was touched by her co-founder's personal experience of homelessness, which prompted the pair to initiate the project. Their organization is committed to raising awareness as well as enhancing access to services and education for unhoused young citizens. Our sincere appreciation, Selena Lovisato, Brooke Baker and all involved in Backs of Promise. May your dedication in supporting young people bring them much hope and dignity in the immeasurable kindness of the Providence. New oat milk company launches in Singapore. Startup oat milk business, Oatside, recently began production in its factory with full in-house control over the manufacturing chain. The product uses Australian oats as well as Rainforest Alliance certified hazelnuts and Indonesian African cacao beans. It is free from gums, emulsifiers and preservatives and created to show how delicious plant-based beverages can be. Furthermore, the packaging used is a recyclable paper carton which is certified by the International Nonprofit Forest Stewardship Council that promotes sustainable forest management. The three initial offerings, Barista Blends, Chocolate and Chocolate Hazelnut, are available online and in Singaporean stores. It has also debuted in Indonesia, Korea, Malaysia, and Taiwan, also known as Formosa, and in the future will be sold in Thailand. Compared to the production of cow people's milk, 90% less land and water are needed and 70% less emissions are generated. Good job, Outside, on your successful launch. In celestial delight, all people soon enjoy delectable vegan products. British cities implements law to create home for pollinators. Brighton and Hove in the United Kingdom recently put into effect a planning condition that obliges all new buildings over 5 meters in height to have special bricks with holes in them for solitary bee people. Furthermore, nesting boxes for swift bird persons are required. Solitary bee people species make up approximately 250 of the 270 species in the nation, and they do not build communal hives, make honey or have a queen. They often establish their nests in the small spaces of the brickwork of older houses. However, new buildings do not contain such gaps. Hence, their potential nesting sites are declining. Other measures environmentalists recommend to promote biodiversity include placing bird feeders, increasing planting and creating hedgehog holes. A big applause Brighton & Hove for your considerate law. May construction regulations worldwide continue evolving so we may share our homes with others in divine care.